So today, there are five things every woman needs to know about a man, apparently. So I want to get your input on this. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. Very happy to welcome back one of my favorite guests, Robert Manny, the author of The Guys, Guys, Guide to Love and the host of Guys, Guy Radio. Robert, thanks for being here again. Thank you so much, Silka. Always a pleasure. Love right. being here. Yeah, I, I love having you here. You give us the man's point of view. And today, that's exactly what we want again. <laughs> one of the most highly searched terms, phrases, is what do men think. And there's so much written on it, so much advice, so much actually by women. Lots of this stuff is just written for younger people, not, not people our age. Maybe you and I need to start write, writing these things. <laughs> <laughs> so today, there are five things every woman needs to know about a man, apparently. So I want to get your input on this. Number one, and this, this threw me, I have not seen this. He doesn't care about texts and neither should you. Basically, the point she makes is that women are just obsessed with how men text or whether they do or how long or what they say. And then men have no idea that they're being scrutinized by texts. H have you ever heard that? Is that true? I think in general, a lot of times women uh, put more psychic energy into trying to sort out the relationship and what's going on in that mysteriously weird male mind. In terms of uh, texting, um, I think texting is, a, I don't want to say it's a necessary evil. It's just part of technology. Guys like technology. They'll use it to exchange information. I think we all have to be careful. And particularly, I think this is words of wisdom for the over 50 crowd is that, you know, we can't, it's, it's hard sometimes to figure out the emotions behind texting. Yeah. So I don't think we should put too much into that. I think uh, we can fall into the trap of overthinking because I don't think guys are thinking that much about, uh, I don't think they're playing games for the most part. I think it's just about exchanging information. So uh, I, I would advise the ladies out there not to take too much stock in terms of um, how much time it takes for a guy to respond. And I also would advise not to rely too much on getting into a pattern where it's all about texting where you know there's a long lost art of picking up the phone and calling somebody and actually hearing what they have to say or doing a FaceTime or, or whatever, that's a lot more effective in terms of being able to get a sense as to what's really going on with somebody versus the texting, because you get those words. And how many times have we misconstrued words that we get in Texas, whether it's with our friends, whether it's a business thing or whether it's in a relationship thing. So when it comes to relationships, the romanticism uh, of a text doesn't exist mm -hmm. yeah. unless you really know how to learn how to play the game and flirt and really have your game chops up. Yeah, I think the reason this came up and, and this kind of makes sense is that because of online dating or just the way we first communi communicate is through text. And I, I experienced this, too, to where, you know, you get these, yeah, long, frequent you know, juicy texts. And then as you start dating, it, that that starts to, you know, go away. But it's just like the guy is just getting back to his normal routine. So right. yeah, just the way we meet now, texting has become a huge part of that. So I think it's a I, I think it's a good conversation. And I think that women, yes, let let's be aware that texting really doesn't mean anything. You don't have a relationship over text. So, so we'll get past that. Well, and that actually leads us into uh, the second point, which is that men communicate through actions more than words. And we've heard this before, this is not groundbreaking, but really the implication here is, or the way she wrote it, is that words don't really mean anything. What a man says doesn't, in a sense, doesn't mean anything because he knows that words are meaningful 
to women and can actually exploit that, tell them what they want to hear to get what he wants. And then in turn, some men hold the words back like the I love you because they know how much that means to a woman. So it, it, she you know, positioned that differently than it usually is. So what, what what's your take on this? I don't know if I necessarily agree with the fact that uh, men are, you know, it's all about action and not about words. Because also there's a lot of guys who are yak, yak, yak about the words and there's no action that backs it up. Uh, right. They're flirty, they promise, a hey baby, all this stuff, and it, there's nothing behind it. So I think we have to be careful when we make these generalizations. And I would take this lady to task a little bit in that. I know she has a psychology background, but, you know, there's so many of these experts who claim to know everything about men who aren't men. Right. And just, we have to put that into context, like, okay, you can study uh, something in textbooks and get your degree and all that, but you're still not necessarily walking in somebody else's shoes. And just as I can't say I'm an expert on women and how they think and how they feel, I, I can give an opinion on it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot more credence when it comes to my experience and men uh, than I do about women. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one of the takeaways, and I don't think it's necessarily just men, is that actions speak louder than words. And that also yes. goes to mixed messages. And we both do that. Men and women do mixed messaging. And so, yeah, if, do, what you, what, do what you say you're going to do is, is certainly one thing to take away here. And then for women, yeah, I mean, if, if he's not backing up, what he's saying, like, you know, I can't wait to see you again. And, and, you know, I just love being with you. And then he doesn't call for three weeks. He's sending you a message and it's a mixed message and it's not good. So in that sense, yeah, but, you know, yeah. actions speak louder than words, but I think that's, that goes for both sexes. Number three, also, we've heard this before, men really just want to make us happy. But because they're men, they just don't know how to do that. So we should ask for it, but ask, but not in a demanding way. And Well, I think it's just in terms of, and this transcends ages and it transcends sexes. It's like, if, if you want something you, and the other person really is not taking the time or is incapable of figuring out what you've been saying, you have to be a little more direct about what you yeah. want. Women have to kind of be a little more clear about this is this is what I want because a lot of times, uh, from my experience, women assume that the guy has gotten into their head and figured out what they want when they haven't been more explicit about saying that. And yeah. then inevitably, a lot of guys, as I'm sure you know, Silka, they get dumped and they can't believe, like, why am I getting dumped? I didn't realize she was so unhappy. Mm -hmm. And part of it is because there wasn't a clear communication as to, I have some issues here. This is what we need to talk about and work on. And exactly. a lot of times it just the relationship ends where maybe it could have been repairable, maybe not. But a lot of it stems from men not paying attention enough, but also sometimes the ladies not being clearer about what it is that's bothering them and what they want. Yeah, exactly. And we've talked about that a lot. And I guess you can't talk about that enough because that is one of the biggest yeah. points of miscommunication between men and women. So, you know, again, to women, what do men think? Yeah, tell them what you want. <laughs> if, if you're not getting it, then if you still don't get it, but don't nag about it. That's, that, that's a good point. You know, don't be demanding, don't nag. And if he does give you what you want, thank him. Be, you know, be accepting and, and, and be encouraging that you get it again. So, you know, we can always be reminded of that. The next one I thought is, will make an interesting discussion that men, Again, and I think this is, comes from, again, the younger perspective, but that guys will resort to all kinds of excuses to avoid being in, a, in an exclusive relationship unless they absolutely have to. And she even says that if a man thinks he's going to lose you, he will just commit immediately. And I think that's, you know, I mean, that really encourages perhaps, I don't know, does it encourage game playing or is this good advice? Well, in, 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 in a sense, it's good advice that he he has to, if if, a, if the woman believes that the guy's playing around mm -hmm. and she wants to make it a more serious relationship and she's invested a lot of herself into that, then it's fair to be able to, you know, do what you need to do to make sure that he knows the lay of the land. Like, if you don't 
if you're not interested in me, then I'm going to, I'm going to do what you're doing, which is see other people, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's human nature. And it, it can sound exploitive or like you're extorting the guy or whatever. So you have to be careful as we always talk about Silka in terms of how you communicate with your partner. But um, I think that men need to know that if they want to play the game and play the field, which I think a lot of guys do, and I think they'll continue to do so until a woman calls BS on them. And there's also women who want to play the field until a guy wants to call BS on them. And that, and I think that transcends age. So when you're in, in a relationship, I think over time you have to establish, okay, what, what is this? I think when it comes to, I'm going to see more people than you, than just you, I think, you know, if one person's under the impression that it's exclusive and the other person is not under that impression, it's eventually going to lead to somebody being disappointed and probably both partners. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess if you, if you threaten or if you say, you know, Hey, I, I want this or I'm leaving, then you have to also back that up and actually leave, uh, you know, then, then it might be effective. If you say it, and he doesn't change, then he was never going to commit anyway. So I guess that's a good a good thing to know. Do you think though that that do you think we still do that at our age? I maybe yeah maybe 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 it is. Do men still they're still they still don't Listen, want to be? If you're a, a, a healthy, attractive guy with a with some money, there's a lot of terrific women out there who are looking. So. Maybe he wants a special partner, but in the meantime, he's going to keep dating yeah. until somebody calls him on it and says, "Hey, you want to be with me, or or do you want to play the field?" Because because if it's a if it's a worthwhile woman, she's going to be in demand also. So I think what's good for the goose is good for the gander, as they say. <laughs> right. Although it can work well if you just date one person at a time, because a lot of times, regardless of age, people jump into the online dating pool, et cetera, and they're overscheduled and they're not seeing what might be the best opportunities that could be right in front of them because there, there's so much there. It's like the kid in the candy store. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to be careful of that. And I think the area where people fall into quick can quickly get into trouble is online, particularly yeah. people who aren't experienced with it. And that can be true for people over 50 who have not been in a dating pool for a while. Maybe they've been married, they got divorced, they're a widow, a widower, whatever, and they're back at it. And they're like, wow, this is wow. easy. I can sit at home in my underpants and I can score <laughs> dates. This is awesome. I don't have to go up to some woman in a bar and say, hi, my name's Lou, can I buy you a drink? I can be doing, meet tons of women online. And it's true. And I think both men and women in these relationships need to be aware of that's a reality. So you have to you have to manage it. Put your foot down if that's what you want, and and then yep. you to back it up. Yeah. The the last one here, I guess it's not nothing news breaking again, but still it's it's interesting that it's stated so strongly. Men are terrified of losing their freedom. That that is like the number one fear of men is is they. They, they just don't want to be locked down. They don't want to have the ball and chain, you know, and that they will do anything to feel free. <laughs> I mean, is that such a, the reason I'm questioning that is because especially, you know, the stats show that men are more quickly jumping into another relationship than women after divorce. You know, is freedom really something that is number one? You know, I think, uh, unfortunately, for a lot of guys, they want to have it both ways. They want to have the relationship, but they want to mentally feel that they're free, that they can do what they want. It might not be dating other women. It might be just they can do what they want when they want, even though they have a partner. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, it's a communication issue. We all know people who've been, who've been married a long time and they get divorced and then they get married immediately again. For a guy to get into a relationship not to get into a relationship who's over 50 say i just want to be free forever that's 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 rare nowadays because what happens is you're going to start to be questioned by women as to why have you been single so long i ran into that myself but i didn't have an issue with that because i had good reason you just have to be clear about you know what the realities are of being what does freedom mean and what is a ball and chain if you think a relationship is a ball and chain don't be in a relationship Yep. You can yep. think of your relationship as freeing you up in many other ways. Yeah, yeah. I think for advice for women on this, and we're, we're starting to come to the end, we'll wrap it up, but that women do tend 
to change once they're in a relationship. Like it, you, you, you bring this free spirited person to the table that has friends that does all kinds of things. And then I'm not, I'm not talking for all women, but I certainly have seen this. And then you, you adapt more and more and more and more to what the guy wants to do to, to his life versus the other way around. And that that can start being, you know, feel constricted to, to a lot mm -hmm. of men. And maybe that's the equivalent, um, you know, of losing his freedom. And that's what they're afraid of. So right. one point on that is that is, and that's not fair to the woman, because if she she's conforming to the guy, and then he feels like he's losing his freedom, but she's the one who's really losing her freedom, because she's conforming to somebody else's lifestyle. Yeah, but it's so, her choice. I'm saying that's that's something that we can control. We don't have to do that. We can maintain our own life, our own interests, and, and thus remain interesting, you know, to our partner, not becoming somebody that, or not yes. the person that they fell in love with. I think that's good advice. I think that's good advice for women. I, I agree completely to, for women on that, that they should have their own life and they should have their own interests. And yeah. then uh, they'll actually become more desirable to the guy because he'll be like, oh, she's going to be doing this or this. I got to get on her schedule. Regardless of how deep you are in the relationship, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that uh, your partner finds time for you. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, Robert, anything else you want to say on this topic? Again, we could talk forever. There's... Uh, there really uh, are some deep things here that we could explore yeah. more, but I'll let you wrap it up. I just think people in relationships, whether it's over 50 or under 50, but particularly for folks over 50, be authentic, be yourself, don't sell yourself short, and the clock's ticking. So if something's not working and you know why or you have an issue, talk about it. Get it out there. Take the chance of getting it out there because you might be completely off base or you might be right on. So instead of wondering you know, when you're after over 50, you want to, you don't want to waste your psychic energy wondering, you want to get it out there and move it ahead or move out. Yeah, move it away. Move and we're never going to know direction. what men think anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It's not you know what, don't overthink trying to figure out what men think, because we're more simple. And I say that as a good thing, uh, than than a lot of women think we are. Robert, as always, I will link to all of your information, to your podcast, to YouTube TV, Guys Guide TV. Hey, I was just on your show. We'll link to that too. Yep. <laughs> and, awesome. we'll see, and we'll see you again soon on Second Act. Right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Silka. Thanks, everybody. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too and we'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.